I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. Today we're going to do a product review on the LS2 Stream Helmet. I'm going to open up right now with wow. We're not going to go price, we're not going to go sell, nothing yet. We're going to go wow. Remember, I ride in these helmets before I get up here and talk to you about them. I want to have a real first person point of view, form an opinion myself. I didn't expect to be dazzled or even all that satisfied with it. I threw it on, went out on the R3, rode around 10, 20 miles, whatever it was, and I forgot that I had on a helmet that I could get for under $100 when I was out there. So that being said, if you're looking for a helmet in this price range, this one's going to be really hard to beat. And if you don't want any more information, stop watching now. Pull the trigger, buy the helmet, you'll be happy you did. For those of you that want more, here we go. Price is going to be from like 99 to 109 Remember, we've got solids and graphics, so just a tiny little variance there. Sizing will span from extra small all the way to 2XL. Free shipping on this helmet to all the lower 48 United States. Affordable and fast international shipping. No restocking fees. You get the stream from us, you wear it in the house, all you need to before you ride in it. Make sure you love the fit and feel. That way, if you've got to send it back for return or exchange, you're going to avoid every hassle and avoid every fee. Additionally, this qualifies for STG cash rewards. You're going to get a great store credit when you purchase this. You can use on your next order here at STG. All right, let's talk about fit first. I measure 58 centimeters on the money. This is a medium, it fit great. I really loved it. They're billing their helmets as like a long oval fit pattern. I would disagree with that. I would say it's more of an intermediate oval or pretty much the same as most common helmets out there, especially those offered within North America. Okay, it's the most common head shape. It runs really true to size. I got a great fit out of a medium. I think that's gonna be the same for most folks out there. One shell size. It is both DTE, uh, DOT and ECE 2205 certified. So even at this price, you're getting a legitimate certification. The helmet has been tested, okay? Multi-layer EPS, right? It's not a composite like a fiberglass shell, right? It's an injected shell, but still good quality shell. Fully removable, washable, replaceable liner. Removable chin curtain. It's going to come with a quick release, micro adjust. How do I feel about that? You know, for a racetrack helmet, I would prefer a full-on strap, okay? Standard D-ring. But honestly, for a street helmet, this is a heck of a convenience. I would have to say that it's absolutely safe. I mean, it has to pass all the testing for sure. This is a good quality mechanism, so, and it's also a nice little convenience, so I think that's really an added benefit. Let's talk about ventilation. How did I feel about that? I'd say it ventilated well. We had good airflow inside the helmet. Are we going to put this up there with a, like a $900 Ride Corsair, you know, or a, a Bell Raystar? No, it's, it's not at that level, but it's really good. Good field of vision inside the helmet. It comes with a drop-down inner screen. So there is no need to buy an additional outer shield. The shield could accept a pin lock insert. If fog is an issue for you, you expect it's going to be, you're able to get their fog free insert, install it in the shield, and you're good to go. Fog is no longer a problem. The vent mechanisms, considering the price point of the helmet, I would say are good. I mean, they surprisingly good, I would say. Exhaust vents back here, intakes up here, and then of course here in the chin bar, this is going to feed air up onto the shield to help demist it when you're riding. Removable breath deflector, okay, this you want to leave in because this helps to drive the air up on the shield for demisting purposes when you're out riding. Okay. Shield, removal, and reinstallation. Bring it all the way to the upward most position, okay? It is spring-loaded 
in such a way that it pulls the shield back against the gasket. Now you're going to need to pull the shield forward, okay, like so. Do that on each side, and then let it ride up in the channel, and off it comes, just like that. You can see the locator pin here, the cam. For reinstallation, you need to line the cam up right here, like so, all the way in the upward most position, both sides. Push in, push down, like so. Once again, up, pull out, rotate all the way up, off it comes. Super simple. The interior of the helmet, these are put together a little differently than I am normally used to, okay? So the neck roll, we're gonna start off by removing that. You can see that there is essentially like a spring steel retainer that holds the neck roll and it has two points that it locks in up here in the front. Easy out, easy back in. You wanna pull the chin curtain out, that's held in between the EPS and the chin and the actual shell of the helmet, just a little bit of pressure there. Now, cheek pads. Just standard snaps, really nothing out of the ordinary here. Pull all that through. Like so. Okay, communication and audio system installation. This helmet will accept it, okay? You can see here in the cheek pads, all right, we've got some perforations there already to deal with, it, allow the sound to flow through. You can make adjustments to that if you needed to. Uh, and then you can see as well in the EPS right here in this area, I don't know if you can catch that or not, Steve, that's kind of tough. There is a depression there to accept it. You know, it, it might take a little creativity to get it in there, but this helmet will work with most of the devices on the market currently. And now we're down to the top pad. Top pad is basically held in from pressure, the neck roll, and the cheek pads at the back. Up here at the front, we've got a channel, plastic tabs. Going to go ahead and release that. <clears throat> Out comes your top pad. Quality of the liner looks good, right? I had noticed too, there is this giant warning tag on the inside of these helmets. You know, that definitely does not enhance airflow, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, so, I mean, you do what you want to do with the warning sticker, but if it were my helmet, I would probably do something to relocate that warning label so it does not have a negative impact on airflow. There is some mesh on the inside of the helmet. This is going to help to slow and quiet the air. Give you a look inside here at the EPS. You can see we've got some large vent holes here. Mechanism for the inner drop down screen. Reassembly, end of the day. You're just gonna reverse the process that I just showed you. To tie this all up, what do I think? I think at this $100 price point, this is gonna be, a, it's gonna be a really difficult helmet to beat. The graphics are good, the fit is great, the performance is probably better than it should be at $100. I really like that it comes with the ECE 2205 certification. That's real peace of mind for sure. You know you've got a piece of safety equipment that's been tested. This is the LS2 Stream Helmet. I can't believe I'm actually excited about a $100 helmet. I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. Thank <laughs> you.